from there actually uh, both of us me and mahmood have been working within these planning projects in oman and uh, and and it's common knowledge here that that urban planning while it is an evolving field of study in the gcc it's it's really growing rapidly and uh, there's a lot of organization there's a lot of growth and uh, that's happening faster than uh, realizing what's going on with the communities at present so uh, there's no uh, real understanding of what's going on on the ground in a in a more formal level and there are no strong, there's no strong presence of formal planners that were there in the in the south net so all of these new urban challenges and urban projects uh, brought in a lot of uh, uh, experts from abroad and uh, you know trying to keep pace with with the with the modernization etc but there is still a, a big gap of what is defined as the money culture and what are the viewpoints of the of the inhabitants you know social sustainability is quite relevant and is becoming more and more at the forefront of the whole sustainability drive but it's also part of oman's vision for the future where people and society are one of the major themes of uh, vision 2040 and for the new renaissance to really take hold uh, this is one aspect that still needs to be explored and defined by uh, by the various consulting agencies in in the uh, in the sultanate and also um, you know uh, as part of uh, the spatial strategy as mamu pointed out that's also becoming one more apparent that there is a lot of uh, sort of push back from the communities if things are not taking them into consideration there's a, there's been a lot of projects that have come and halted or been or even road projects that have come in and been facing a lot of resistance from people because they've just not involved them in the whole process and uh, we also started to understand that there is actually a lot of application of ethnography in in modern sectors uh, you know i myself do, have, was a user researcher uh, in india and that had nothing to do with the planning or architecture but it had to do with everything with every other sector so i'm sure a lot of us have heard of user research and ux and ui and but it's mostly for the tech field but it's also for healthcare for all these various industries and there's a lot of firms that provide these as services if you're going to approach urban ethnography then you know what are we trying to understand so we know that this is so this is oman and oman is divided into several um, governorates and muscat in itself is also governorate and so we zoomed in on muscat because that's where we're also based and it has self so each governorate has several uh, wilayas so a wilaya is kind of like a smaller district but uh, this has several towns and neighborhoods within it so when we uh, so we focused in on this coastal area which is where muscat city is most dense and this is how it is so this is just to give you an idea of just the kind of character of the landscape it's not just all flat it's it's flat along the coasts in in older muscat it's much more uh, hilly and mountainous the whole area has been urbanized but it has a lot of coal pockets which are very closely knit to the natural landscapes so we just started to zoom in and to see where people would feel their sense of space and place and really we sort of try to establish that the most basic scale for us to conduct any kind of study would be the neighborhood scale which is roughly 1 square kilometer and that would be the most effective scale for a person to to really feel like they belong to it and feel connected to it in a much more real way and then we started to identify various neighborhoods across trying to see what different parameters uh, could help us have a rich sort of like uh, understanding of uh, of these neighborhoods what we also realize is that there is no formal definition of neighborhoods uh, identified by the government these yellow spots you see are literally uh, what google thinks is the neighborhood but it's not really necessarily that uh, boundary of the neighborhood so we identify these to to be at least the ones that uh, ticked off most of the parameters and we started uh, getting volunteers to help us come and conduct some sort of field ethnography in these two places one is gala or village and the other one is adeba and uh, gala village is actually a very small 
like really like a small village in the middle of a bustling city. So it was a very unique situation. And Azeba is it has it has old pockets as as uh, well as considered a you know like modern sort of settlement as well. So we thought this would be good contrast, and hopefully we would want to spread into Rui, which is a lot more complex in the way because of its old uh, role in old um, uh, Masbat, and then towards the other side where this which is actually. Um, Got a lot of old coastal settlements and coastal towns there, so and it has a lot of uh, mix of activities and uh, attitudes, everything going on over there. So just to touch upon what we thought we would try to follow as a process, regardless of the situation, at least at the baseline, one was to conduct that um, secondary research. So here we wanted to just collect baseline data, whatever existing documentation, any. Like try to identify potential gaps, challenges, and in, in what are we trying to learn about these neighborhoods? But we uh, like some of the things that came up was that there's little to almost no data on the neighborhood level. There's a lot of data, say, or not even a lot, but at least some amount of data on the wilayat level, which is all the various neighborhoods, you know, bunched into one. And um, all the histories and cultural nuances are completely lost in terms of formal documentation. And uh, the entire idea of the places itself uh, remain as notions of, you know, this is a posh area or this has got more of these types of uh, demographics in, in that neighborhood. But that's pretty much the entire identity of a place that is understood right now. It's more through an economic lens community engagement so we want to develop sort of guidelines and how who like who do we approach who can we talk to who should we be talking to to have the social spatial understanding and some of the key uh, you know uh, guidelines we follow is that you know just knocking on a door and saying hi can we talk to you will not work in many communities and that it could actually work against you where you may not even be welcome back so we have to understand social structures and protocols and um, kind of going through references. So these references are like very important for everyone. And uh, that's where our member networks start, started to come into play, which I'll talk about a bit later. Uh, also like saying, exchanging gifts or trying to thank somebody for their time is not so simple. We actually have to, uh, you know, uh, follow certain protocols and also the dynamics between men and women, what works, what doesn't, what would lead to bias, what would not. Uh, and we started to, to take all these uh, into account, into guidelines and sort of tools like orientation tools for anybody who, who was helping us out in, in conducting these studies. The next is in terms of field ethnography, that's kind of the chunk of our work. Uh, where you know uh, the, uh, we, we we try to conduct various types of interviews, in-depth interviews, spot interviews, observations, focus group discussions, for which we have so far developed uh, very detailed guidelines and even have to record all of this information, uh, what's okay, what's not okay, and um, we have been trained, uh, trying to put that into practice. Uh, then building trust, capacity, and, and, and empowerment is that we are looking, we are, we are, we are finding that uh, people are more and more aware of what we're doing and um, that uh, even we become more aware of, uh, you know, uh, their capacities and the way that they respond to what we're trying to find out. And we find out that actually older settlements are very open to to being, uh, you know, to, to wanting uh, to participate in their spatial futures and sort of activate their neighborhoods, but they might still be very conservative or reserved in other aspects. But the opposite may be true in, in, in a newer neighborhood where people are actually quite disconnected, but then they're very, you know, uh, they're, they're quite open to any kind of a new intervention. And we're trying to explore, and we haven't gotten into yet, but we have we have certain frameworks that we try to develop for data interoperability, which is to use CGIS and, um, you know, even uh, forms of uh, photography, film and art uh, to be able to interpret qualitative data, to be able to give a sense of the culture of the place, 
and an, and an understanding of the place and we're trying to figure how this can be practically used by these uh, agencies that are making change like not just NGOs but like the private agencies all these companies that are transforming the urban patterns of, of Masbat and the rest of Oman. Uh, the next is in terms of the analysis and opportunities and basically strategizing for what should happen. So, so far, uh, so what we do is we take all this raw information and we give it some level of structure. And with this structure, we try to simplify it enough to be able to form the character of the place. So we're, we're planning on taking all of this uh, um, analytical data and outcomes to sort of have exercises with the community to test whether this makes sense to them or what they value more or less in their communities and try to find a way to characterize these neighborhoods. What do they value more or less and how does it affect or what kind of impact do they face when there are urban developments in and around where they are. So Oman Think Urban itself uh, was founded last year, uh, it was 2019. And it was just me and Mahmood and trying to <laughs> build up a conversation about what is missing in, in our work that we're doing day to day and facing uh, in the country. And um, it sort of quickly catapulted into a whole load of people who had the same issues and the same questions. And it's become uh, now like a 60 plus network of uh, multidisciplinary, uh, you know, professionals and academicians, there's students, there's uh, professionals, there's people from the government, everybody is somehow involved in this very informal network that we've created. And we realized that small efforts that we put forward have really been showing the potential to create large impact and action on the ground. Yeah, uh, it is so interesting that when we started first, when we were trying to spread these ideas about what is ethnography and then how is it linked to urban planning, a lot of people around us, they were quite skeptical, you know, I mean, like they were literally like saying like, what the hell are you talking about, you know? <laughs> but then um, it is it is interesting that within a short period that those skeptics have become actually the, uh, the core team members um, of Oman Think Urban, who are, who are actually pushing for it hard. Uh, in this year and in the, in, the, in the coming year, we aim to be a center for excellence for human-centered urban design and planning in Oman. And uh, there are, some, there are uh, uh, three parts to this. One is that we uh, want to explore and document the neighborhoods and build, uh, build upon the social, social spatial intelligence that we have been uh, doing so far with volunteers. So that way we want to set up networks to gain trust and ex uh, acceptance for the researchers from within the communities. Uh, we have been conducting in-depth interviews with men, women, and try to document every step of what we're doing and how it works, the protocols follow, the failures and successes of what we've been doing, and trying to establish sort of tools for this. And we've been conducting observations, spot interviews, and we've been discussing what tools we can develop because it's not standard practice so far uh, that we've been able to come across that we can just sort of, you know, do. But it, so it's something we feel like we have to come up with some new tools. Um, uh, and with this, we have been actually mapping all these narratives and trying to find out what are the various intangible aspects of the, you know, um, uh, like the, the, the whole community itself and found a lot of uh, things have gone under the radar in terms of the culture itself, the practices, the rituals, the importance of these rituals, uh, how, where and why do they happen? And the fact that there is no real documentation of them is, you know, really bring, uh, brings to the forefront that we need to do more of this. So we have been trying to develop the framework for analysis and trying to come up with community workshopping techniques so that it, it be, we involve the community voice right from scratch to the final product and, and try to harness their expertise and we believe that the communities are willing to engage as their own experts. 
and they're very willing they're very uh, regardless of their uh, characteristics they are very um, knowledgeable of their own roots of their own capabilities and uh, there's a lot of action on the ground which is just not recognized still by the government so we feel like we can help structure their thoughts and their expertise to be able to meet um, decision makers halfway Yes. So this yeah. is just some of the frameworks. Yeah, you know, right. um, um, I think that one of the major strengths, strengths, uh, and I think that one of the major differences that we we have brought um, into the scene here in Oman is that urban planning has been always a top-down um, a system in the country, ruled by a very strong uh, a, a planning authority that have obviously the legal mandate as well as the money to execute. So it was, it, it was a very powerful agency that could plan and execute at the same time. So it was a very you know, strong top-down drive during these almost 50 years of, of Oman. But then bringing that perspective uh, into the community and then trying to get that bottom-up look, uh, it, it was in, in, in fact very well accepted, and 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 coming in there with this clear mindset that we we are not the experts, you are the experts who who, who we are here trying to learn from, and then this is your community, you're the one who knows it better. Like as part of uh, Mahmoud's engagements with the with the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning, he's been touring the, the whole Sultanate, visiting all these different places, and we can see already that there are uh, community form groups which are, you know, uh, creating their own tourism facilities, their own uh, sort of um, you know economic drivers within their communities, even though. It looks like it could have been from the government, but it's it was uh, even surprising for me to re to realize that so many like so many of these heritage villages, uh, which are just waiting to be uh, sort of exposed to to more of the people, are actually taking their uh, matters into their own hands and they're doing a really good job of it, using traditional yeah. building techniques, um, mm -hmm. you know, their own governance systems. Yeah, uh, I'm, in in fact, um, more and more. As I go around Oman and, and, and kind of rechecking on the buy-in of those different tribes around Oman, I mean Oman is still um, a, a tribal society. And um, I mean, you know, it's like my, my last name and Wahabi, it is in fact a, a signifier of my of, of my belongings to Al Al Wahabi tribe, which is originally from here, from Muscat. Um, we, we are in fact the builders of this city um, more than a thousand years back. Um, so there's that clear connection uh, here in, in Oman between tribalism and the urban uh, evolution. So people do, uh, people still in fact do, do take pride on where they're from and, uh, and, and there are some amazing initiatives throughout Oman as a second uh, agenda of Omantic Urban is to provide this platform for these multi locals uh, to initiate action uh, in the urban realm, but through the vision of OTU, which is uh, through the participatory process. It's uh, basically, we had initiated um, a pilot project with a partner organization in India to understand the local communities and, uh, you know, especially that work uh, precipitated through the whole COVID crisis of the year and how it affected all these communities and, and how community dynamics is becoming more and more apparent. So we're doing like a parallel project in India and uh, in Oman. Uh, and then we have uh, we started workshopping with our members itself to launch uh, smaller initiatives that you know uh, include like food mapping of a certain uh, neighborhood, which is also part of a student project as well as it, it's uh, very close to the heart of a lot of the members who are from the same neighborhood uh, and then even to like say create art in a public space but how would they do it through a participatory process as well as to 
uh, publish uh, our work biannually uh, for the for the year. So starting in, in 2021, we are trying to aim for the completion of these um, uh, initiatives. And these initiatives are completely from the members itself. So we want to give that platform to whoever is part of Amantika because they're the locals as well. And um, we've been uh, lobbying for what we believe in. Uh, you know, we have been talking at conferences. We have been representing Omanthi Gavin at, uh, you know, government-led um, talks like the World Urbanism Day that the ministry has had held, as well as trying to make our presence felt and talk about what we believe in and uh, partnering with international companies as well that have their own international networks. Uh, for instance, the ISP network for the International Soft Diplomacy network. Um, we have been also, uh, as a third agenda, we want to provide this as a quality service to a commercial arm where we can become accessible as a formalized service, which can provide, uh, you know, uh, like a, sort of a gateway into the structured process of participatory planning for all these public and private urban development projects that are coming up in the South Net. So Manting Urban is now uh, in its transformative phase where we are uh, sustaining this 60 plus member network of members, experts, organizations. And uh, we hope to be able to nurture these initiatives, um, you know, for, uh, as a platform as well as, you know, on ground action. And, um, you know, hopefully make participating process more mainstream within the, within the development scenarios in Oman.